Hey, welcome to Easy Lecture. I'm your host, Professor Ashley Carter from Amherst College's Physics Department. We've got a great series of lectures planned for you on physics and math concepts. Let's get started. This lesson will be on differential equations that describe oscillations. A damp-driven harmonic oscillator is an incredibly useful physical model. Sure, it describes the motion of this torsional oscillator. But it also describes the motion of this stand when I ping it. Describes the sway of this building and the vibration that you feel when a big truck goes by outside. So understanding the damped driven harmonic oscillator and the differential equations that describe it will be really important. The differential equation that describes the motion for a damped harmonic oscillator is typically written like so. We've got the second derivative of x plus 2 times beta, which is a constant, times the first derivative of x, plus omega naught squared, omega naught is a constant here, times x equals 0. This gives us the damped differential equation for harmonic oscillators. This is a second order homogeneous linear differential equation. If we wanted to write the differential equation for a damped driven harmonic oscillator, we would need to add this extra term, f of t. This differential equation is still linear and second order, but now it's actually inhomogeneous, with the f of t replacing the zero on the right-hand side. If we want to solve the damped driven harmonic oscillator, then we want to find ways to solve second order linear differential equations that are inhomogeneous. And that is where this lesson comes in. Our learning goals for this lesson will be to one, use an auxiliary equation to solve a homogeneous second order linear differential equation, such as the damped harmonic oscillator, and two, be able to find a particular solution for an inhomogeneous second order linear differential equation using successive integration. This will allow us to solve the damped driven harmonic oscillator problem. Our discussion will follow the text Mathematical Methods in the Physical Sciences by Mary Boaz, and we'll be looking at chapter eight, sections five and six. Our first goal is to use an auxiliary equation. We want to solve a second order homogeneous differential equation by using an auxiliary equation. So first let's write down a linear second order homogeneous differential equation like so. We'll make the dependent variable x and the independent variable t. a0, a1, and a2 will all be constants or functions of t. Let's also define a differential operator, capital D, that takes the derivative and another operator, d squared, that takes the second derivative. So we can rewrite our arbitrary second order homogeneous linear differential equation with our differential operator, like so. Let's pull out the x um, to get this form. Now it may not look like we've done very much, but we've made a big improvement. You see, this expression in the parentheses looks an awful lot like it could be factored. If we could factor that expression, then we'd have two first order linear differential equations instead of one second order linear differential equation. And this would be great because we already know how to solve a first order linear differential equation. And it turns out that we can do exactly that. We can factor this expression in the parentheses. All we need to do is we need to set this expression to zero. This is known as the auxiliary equation. And we will be trying to find this auxiliary equation and we'll be using that auxiliary equation in order to solve our second order homogeneous linear differential equations. To solve this auxiliary equation, all we need to do is find the roots. And we can do that by using the quadratic formula. We'll find two roots, r1 and r2, that are equal to this expression. Here I've rewritten our original differential equation using the roots, and then I've further broken up our second order differential equation into two first order differential equations. We can now solve these two first order differential equations by using our method of integration factors. That produces these two solutions here. The general solution will just be the sum of both of these solutions. 
This is, of course, when R1 doesn't equal R2. If R1 equals R2, then these two expressions would be exactly the same, and we would only have one arbitrary independent constant. And remember, we need two, so we need to actually find another solution if R1 equals R2. It turns out that if R1 equals R2, we'll set it to R, then our general solution will have the form of a constant times e to the rt plus a constant times t times e to the rt, where t is our independent variable. It's also important to note that if the roots are complex, then the exponentials would be complex. And if the roots are real, then the exponentials will be real. Now that we've found this general solution, let's go back and recap the major steps to finding the general solution. We started off with our second order linear homogeneous differential equation. We then were able to write an auxiliary equation and we found the roots. We used these roots to write our general solution. Remember that if the roots are equal to one another, we need to add in this extra t into the exponential term. Thus we have found that the general solution for any second order linear differential equation. Let's try some problems to get you familiar with solving second order linear differential equations by finding the roots to the auxiliary equation. In the first problem, let's find the auxiliary equation for the second order differential equation. You should have isolated the auxiliary equation as d squared minus 3d minus 4 equals 0. Now find the roots of the auxiliary equation for the second order differential equation and use the roots to compute the general solution. You should have found that the roots are 4 and negative 1. Remember that the roots r1 and r2 are positive if they are subtracted from d in the factored expression and negative if they're added to d. The general solution is then just c1 e to the 4t plus c2 e to the negative t, where c1 and c2 are our arbitrary constants. Let's go ahead and find the general solution to another problem. In this problem, I want you to find the auxiliary equation and the roots for this second order differential equation. And I want you to use the roots to compute the general solution.
For this problem, you should have found that the auxiliary equation is d squared minus 4d plus 4 equals 0. The roots will then be 2 and 2. Remember, they should be positive and not negative according to our convention. But this means that there are two twos. So when we go ahead and write the general solution, we've got to make sure that we multiply by a t for one of our terms. You should be getting the hang of things now. So let's try to solve the differential equation that represents a damped harmonic oscillator. You should have found that the auxiliary equation is d squared plus 2 beta d plus omega naught squared equals 0. Using the quadratic formula, you can find the roots as negative beta plus or minus the square root of beta squared minus omega naught squared. The general solution is then given by plugging the two roots that you found into our expression. If you were able to get this solution, then good work. If you need some more practice, then there are some great problems in Chapter 8, Section 5 of BOAS that you should try out. If you've gotten this far, then you've just solved the differential equation for a damped harmonic oscillator. Good work. You still need to discuss the physics of what's happening, but for now our job is to focus on the mathematical description. Our goal in this section was to learn how to solve a homogeneous second order linear differential equation by finding the roots of an auxiliary equation. In the next section, we'll turn our focus to solving the inhomogeneous differential equation. To do that, you will need to be able to find a particular solution. Our next goal is to use successive integration to find a particular solution. Let's start by defining an arbitrary second order inhomogeneous linear differential equation. Our goal will be to solve this differential equation to find the general solution. But how should we proceed? We already know from our introductory lesson that the general solution to an inhomogeneous differential equation will contain both the complementary solution and the particular solution. The complementary solution is the general solution to the homogeneous version of the differential equation. The particular solution is the solution that actually solves the inhomogeneous differential equation. We need both for our general solution. But let's review why you need both the complementary and particular solution. The complementary solution will contain the two arbitrary independent constants that are needed to satisfy the boundary conditions. If you just had the general solution with the particular solution, you wouldn't be able to satisfy those conditions. And vice versa. You need the particular solution so that your general solution will actually be able to solve the differential equation. If you only have a complementary solution, then you'd never be able to get the left-hand side of the equation to equal the right-hand side. You really need to find both. Luckily, we've already learned how to find the complementary solution in the last section. That is, all we have to do to find the complementary solution is to solve the homogeneous version of the differential equation. Our job in this section is to figure out how to find the particular solution. There are actually many methods for doing this. One which you used before is guess and check. But instead of discussing this method, let's discuss a more powerful method. That method is still general, and it involves successive integration of two first order equations. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to find a particular solution to our second order inhomogeneous differential equation. We're going to start off by writing our differential equation using our differential operators, and by factoring out our dependent variable x. We can even factor the expression if we know the roots of the auxiliary equation for our homogeneous differential equation. And then we can do one more thing. We can make a substitution 
such that u is equal to d minus root 2 times x. This means that d minus root 1 times u is equal to f of t. Here u is going to be some function of t as well. So basically what we've done is we've broken our second order differential equation into two first order differential equations. Both of them are inhomogeneous. And that's great because we already know how to solve a first order linear inhomogeneous differential equation by using an integration factor. The general solution will be to use this integration factor here to find RU. Again, this will be the particular solution and this side will have the complementary solution. If we only want the particular solution, we can just drop this term from u. Thus, we find that u particular is just our integration factor, but to the minus i1 times the integral of f of t e to the i1 dt. So we can use this integral to solve for u particular. We can repeat this process again for this other first order linear differential equation. This time we'll have a second integration factor and we'll find x particular using this equation. Solving this final integral will give us the particular solution for this first order differential equation and it will give us the particular solution for our original second order differential equation. Thus we can use successive integrations one and two to find a particular solution for our inhomogeneous differential equation. To make sure that you have this technique down, let's review the steps for the successive integration of two first order equations. To make sure that you have this technique down, let's review the steps for the successive integration. First, we're gonna start off with our inhomogeneous differential equation, and we'll find the roots of the auxiliary equation for the homogeneous differential equation. We'll factor our differential equation into these roots and write it like so. Then we'll be able to find u particular by using the first integration factor. And we'll find x particular by using the second integration factor. Let's do some practice problems so that you can try this technique out. In the first problem, I want you to rewrite the differential equation using the roots from the auxiliary equation and the differential operator. Here we want to rewrite the differential equation using the roots from our auxiliary equation. We already found the roots before to be four and negative one. So what we can do is we can rewrite our differential equation using these roots. Now we can go ahead and make a u substitution. After we've made this u substitution, we can find the particular solution for u. Go ahead and find u particular. First, we'll need to find the integration factor, 
which will just be e to the negative 4t. We can then plug this into our equation for u particular and integrate to find e to the t over negative 3. Now that we have u particular, why don't you go ahead and find the particular solution for x. To find x particular, again, we'll need our integration factor, which is just e to the t. We'll plug this integration factor into our equation for x particular and integrate to get e to the t over negative 6. If you haven't done so already, why don't you check to see that the particular solution for x is correct, and then find the general solution. You should find that when you plug in the derivatives for x particular, get the following equation. Simplifying, we see that e to the t equals e to the t, and the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. So yes, this particular solution is correct. To find the general solution, we'll just add our particular solution to the complementary solution, which we found previously. So we'll just entail adding it to c1 e to the 4t plus c2 e to the negative t. Let's try another problem. This time, we want to find both the particular solution and general solution for this differential equation. We found previously that the roots are 2 and 2. So our differential equation should now look like the following. Next, let's find the particular solution for u. You'll actually need the following integral. To find u particular, you'll first need to find the integration factor, which is just e to the negative 2t. We plug in this integration factor into our integral and integrate using that equation that I gave you at the beginning. If you do that, you should get this following equation and the solution sine t over 5 minus 2 cosine t over 5. 
After we've found new particular, we'll next need to find x particular to find our general solution. Go ahead and find x particular. You'll need to use the following integral. To find x particular, you'll still need to use the integration factor e to the negative 2t and plug it into the integral like so. Solving this integral, you should find that you get negative 4 over 25 sine t plus 3 over 25 cosine t. To get the general solution, you just add our particular solution to the complementary solution, which is our solution to the homogeneous equation of c1 e to the 2t plus c2 times t times e to the 2t. Hopefully by now, you're seeing that this technique, while powerful, takes a lot of effort. Perhaps you're thinking to yourself that guess and check might not be a such a bad idea after all. And in this case, it wouldn't have been. My goal here is to teach you a general method of finding a particular solution that doesn't involve the voodoo that sometimes occurs with guessing. If you'd like to do more practice problems, you should consult Boaz chapter eight, section six. If you think you have the hang of it, then let's solve the inhomogeneous differential equation for the driven damped harmonic oscillator. To solve the differential equation for the damped driven harmonic oscillator, we need to first define our f of t. Let's say that f of t, our driving function, is just going to be a times cosine of omega t. But this driving function is slightly unlucky for us because we just saw that the successive integration for a cosine function was a lot harder than the successive integration for an exponential. So let's change our function to an exponential. The trigonometric identity we will need is this equation, where we have a e to the i omega t is equal to a times cosine omega t plus i sine omega t. You can see that the real part of the complex exponential is the cosine term. So at the end, after we've found our particular solution, all we have to do is take the real part of the particular solution to get the particular solution to our original differential equation. With this in mind, let's go ahead and find the particular solution to the following second order differential equation. Here's our problem. Find the particular solution using successive integration and then find this general solution for x. You should have found that the particular solution is just going to be a over the following expression times e to the i omega t. Now remember, this isn't actually the particular solution to our original second order differential equation. The particular solution to that original second order differential equation will just be the real part of this particular solution. Thus, if we wanted to write the general solution, to our damped driven harmonic oscillator, we would need to write the real part of this particular solution plus our complementary solution, which is just our solution to the homogeneous version or the damped harmonic oscillator, like so. 
Now, this solution doesn't look very pretty, so it will be up to us as physicists to simplify it and make sense of it. But in terms of solving the differential equation, our task is done, and thus this section is done as well. For our learning goals, we focused on solving second-order linear differential equations, both homogeneous and inhomogeneous. We've used an auxiliary equation to solve the homogeneous second-order linear differential equation, and we've also been able to find a particular solution using successive integration. Hopefully you've seen that during this lesson, you've learned about these two goals. The techniques that we've learned today will ultimately be helpful in solving the mathematical equations that describe the driven damped harmonic oscillator. And understanding the damped driven harmonic oscillator is actually more important than you think. If you decide to work in experimental physics or engineering, then a lot of what you'll be doing is analyzing the noise of a particular system. That noise can often be modeled by assuming that the different components in the system act like a driven damped harmonic oscillator. So just by knowing the physics and the math behind this simple system allows you to describe a whole host of more complicated systems. That's it.